Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. And welcome to Do the Math. I'm Michael, and in studio with me is Matthew. Matthew, if somebody needed to contact us, what would they need to do? For math homework help, call in Bakersfield 636 4357, everywhere else 1 866 636 6284, email do the math at, at kern.org. We're online at do the math online.net and on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, nicely done, Matthew. So where do you attend school and what grade are you in? I attend school at Stockdale Elementary School, and I am in sixth grade. How is sixth grade going? It's going all right. I'm not a big fan of the masks <laughs> in school, but... I don't think a lot of kids are, right? Yeah. Uh, something, but at least we're at school. Yeah, it's so better than distance learning. Right, so it's a better way of looking at it. We're at least at school. And uh, so sixth grade, you're at the end of elementary school this year. Yeah. So is there anything you're looking forward to as you go to junior high school next year? More teachers. So you like having the variety of teachers? Yes. Oh, good. Is there a, a, a particular subject that you're looking forward to or just overall the Mainly whole experience? Mainly science and history. Oh, good. Science and history. Is there a particular period in history that interests you a lot? Mainly Greek and Roman. Okay, so you like that ancient history of the Greeks and Romans and a lot of things that are going on and a lot of our language comes from Greek, but, not, but you go in more into the history instead of the English and vocabulary and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so what, was there something that you studied in the past or is this something you've done on your own that sparked an interest in that time of history? Mainly just my interest in it because it's very interesting I guess. I mean, there's a lot of exciting things going on right yeah and uh, so I mean so in sixth grade and I know that in one of your programs you probably in fourth or fifth grade may have studied a little bit about mythology yeah. did you study a little bit about mythology you know about myths and things like that yes okay so that's a lot of Greek and Roman influence also there with the myth and how things are perceived today even back then, they used myths to kind of explain things, but uh, it's very interesting, all of that stuff. But sixth grade is going well. Yes. Good. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's going to be coming up in sixth grade. And you are working on doing equations and decimals and fractions and all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. All right, good. So you ready to do all of that today? Yes. Well, we will do all of that today. But first, let's take a look at today's Math in the News. <music> All right, so Matthew, do you know what is going on in Los Angeles this Sunday afternoon? The Super Bowl, there right? There you go, the Super Bowl, right? I think just about everybody knows about the Super Bowl coming up, right? Right. And sporting events are usually pretty loud. Yes. Okay. Have you ever been to an event or a, something that has been very, very loud? Not too loud, but... Concerts or anything like that? I've been to one concert, but it wasn't too loud. Okay. Not like... You, you don't want to be up close to the speakers either and stuff like that, right? So no. you, you hurt, impair your hearing. hearing. Um, what is the loudest sound you think you've ever heard? 
Where do you think that came from? I'm not really sure. Okay, can you think of the quietest sound you've ever heard? Listen right now, just listen. Can you hear anything? Yes. What do you hear? I hear a fan going. Okay, you hear a fan going, right? That's pretty low. Yes. Right? It, it, it's almost like you kind of have to really listen to hear it, right? Do you know about decibels? Yes. What do you know about that? I know that they are a unit of measurement to measure sound. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted you to get to. So there was a headline here, the quietest place in the world is a chamber at Microsoft's headquarters. Now, you've heard of Microsoft. Yes. Okay. The quietest place in the world is at Microsoft. And we're going to really? check it out right now. Building 87 in Washington, one of the campuses, is an echoic chamber, specifically designed to eliminate outside noise in all its forms. So what they do is they test ambient noise, like background noise. Yeah. Okay. And it says, the hum of a monitor or a cable, right? If you have your computer monitor on, if you listen very closely, can you ever hear something from your computer? Yes, I yes, can. Right? You can you, you, yeah. It's very faint sometimes, but you can hear something, right? right? Just a little bit of a buzz or maybe a fan going or something like that, okay? Yes. What they do is they constructed this building, this room, this chamber, with six layers of concrete and steel, and that all rests on damping springs in the floor to eliminate nearby vibrations. Fiberglass wedges, okay, and sometimes you'll see it in studios where it looks like foam, all right? Those are the fiberglass wedges. Cover the walls and ceiling, designed so the sound waves get trapped in their geometry and dissipate. Now that room, okay, is at negative 20 decibels. Wow. So it's kind of hard to imagine that there would be a negative decibel, right? Because it measures sound, right? And if we're like, everything has a sound, so everything's got to have something. This is at negative 20. So let's take a look at the system right here. So whispering, if you and I are just whispering like this, right? Yeah. That's 30 decibels, right? So that's pretty low, right? Normal conversation, what we're doing right now they say is about 60 decibels, hmm. all right? So we can take a look at the chart here, and it's got, you know, up towards the top, 120, a sports crowd, concerts, sirens, right? Ambulance going by or something like that, fire engine. Uh, all of those things are, are pretty high, right? Um, inside of a car, right? You hear all of the noise inside the car and outside of the car as well. So you can see that at negative, it would be, you're not going to hear anything, right? They want to get, they want to eliminate that altogether. Now, that's a little bit of the math, seeing how this progresses, but there's even one more, all right? Now, I asked you what a decibel was, right? And what yes. did you say? Do you remember what you said? Yes. Can you a, tell me one more time? A unit of measurement used to measure sound. And take a look at the sentence that I have here first is a unit used to measure the intensity of a sound. You had that spot on, right? right? Just from knowing that information. So silence is at zero. And a sound 10 times more powerful is 10 decibels. A sound 100 times more is 20 decibels. So it does, when it goes from 10 to 20, it doubles 10 to 20, right? right. But the power of that sound, right, it's going up exponentially by tens. You see how on the far side we keep adding zeros? Yes. Okay. So that is a logarithmic scale. All right. So you can see, you go, all right, well, it goes from zero to 10, that went up 10. But when you go from 10 to 20, it doesn't go up 10, it goes up 100 times. All right. And that's the logarithmic scale. And that is today's Math in the News with decibels. And the quietest place on earth is in Washington. The uh, Microsoft building number, what was that, 87 it said it was? I think, I think so, maybe I think that 86. Was 87. Let's go back and take a look at that really quick. So if you're ever in Redmond, Washington, all right, 
and you go to Microsoft and you're on a tour or something like that, if you think about it, say, hey, you know, I know the tour is really great. I'm learning a lot. Can we go to Building 87? Right? And see yeah. if they'll let you in there and see if you can make noise and see if they can record it. Anyway, that's today's Math in the News. We do have phone tutors available most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Matthew is a fifth grade student from Stockdale Elementary. And have you been at Stockdale since kindergarten? Yes. So you're pretty used to it. Yeah. But you're looking forward to a variety of instructors at junior high. Yes. Well, guess what? You're going to have a math instructor over there, don't you think? Yes. All right. Get to the board. Let's get busy on this. So one of the things you'll be doing in junior high school are equations. All right. So why don't okay. you go ahead and grab one of the markers and we'll go ahead and work on this. I will let you select which one we do. Now, you didn't even, you didn't even take a look at these. 7, 8, 9, or 10? I'll do 8. 8. All right. Here we go. Ah, they agree with you in the back room as well. All right. So start all the way over on the left-hand side, and we'll write out this equation. 2, open parentheses, 5 minus x, close parentheses, plus 6x equals x plus 22. So do me a favor, and as you're working on that, I need you to explain to me exactly what you're doing and what you're thinking as you write things down. Okay. All right, go ahead. So there is one set of parentheses, parentheses so I want to multiply 2 by both of those numbers first. So 2 times 5, 10, negative 2x, and then plus 6 is not in any, plus 6x, sorry, is not in any parentheses, so I'm just going to write that down and leave Good. it by itself. Perfect. So, so far you, you've used the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. Right. All right. So what about the other side? Since there are no parentheses, I just leave it as it is for now. Okay. Sorry. And there are, there is one set of like terms, 10 and po positive 6, so I want to add those together. Well, the 10 and the positive 6, are they the same or is there a difference between them? Because take a look at the 6. Oh. All right, you got 6x there, right? Right. So those two can't go together, but two things can go together. Negative 2x and negative positive 2x. There you go, perfect. Positive 6x. So now what do you get with that? I would get, I believe, positive 4x or 4x. Right, so it's just 4x. So, x. Okay, so before you go on, you've got 4x10. What does that mean? That means a 4x four, four and a 10. Okay, right? is the 10 positive or negative? Because we need some symbol in front of it. Uh, positive, so let me... There you go, you can just move the 4x over a little bit, or you can just erase it and start over, it's up to you. All right, so now we've got 4x plus 10. Yes. Now what would you like to do? I want to get all of the, I want to get all of the variables on one side. Good. Sounds like a good plan. So you have to move one of them then. Yes. Which one would you like to move? I would like to do x because it is a smaller, the smaller des exponent or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so it's the smaller value of x. Yes. How would you like to get rid of it? I would do minus x. Good. And why do you do minus x? Because x is a positive x, and to cancel it out, you would subtract negative x, just subtract x from it to get zero. Perfect. And if you subtract x there, what else do you have to do? I have to do, I have to do the same thing to 4x, so... Be. 
Now, everything is perfect so far, but I saw that you had a zero and then you erased it. Why did you do that? Because I don't want to put a zero there because that might confuse me later on. Because the x and the negative x just cancel each other out. Right. All right. What's the next step? I get rid of the I get rid of the 3 next to the x. You can do that, but before you do that, is there something you could do to make everything flow a little bit easier? I could get rid of the positive 10. Too. Okay. So why do you want to get rid of the positive 10? So I only have one number on one side and another on the other side. So you have the variables on one side, numbers on the other. Right. Perfect. So how are we going to get rid of that 10? I would just subtract 10 to cancel it out. And since I'm doing that, I also have to do it to the other side. So Very good. It looks like you're getting pretty close to being done here. I'm going to give you a little more room on the board. So what do you think the next thing to do is? I want to get rid of the 3 next to the variable. So and how do you do that? I could just do min minus 3 to get rid of it. Could you do just minus 3? What does 3x mean when those two are together? It means 3 and x, so... So it means 3 times x. Yes. Right? So 3x next to each other like that means you're going to multiply. Yes. So, so, so far you've been doing the opposite, the inverse property all the time, right? Yes. You've been going minus and adding to do the opposite, right? Right. So if you're multiplying 3 and x, what's the opposite of that? I want to divide 3x by 3. Perfect. do that on the other side, so I'll just get x equals 4. Good. Nicely done. You know what? That is exactly the right answer, but we're going to check it, and I'm going to have you do that in just a moment. Okay. All right? But do remember we have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. The phone numbers are at the bottom of your screen periodically throughout the program. And we always like to go out to businesses throughout Bakersfield and Kern County and see what they're doing and how they apply math to it, and that's exactly where we're going to go right now. We're out here at Queen Caterpillar out here in Bakersfield, California, in our hometown. I'm here with Craig Henderson, and Craig, you are the parts manager here at Quinn Caterpillar, is that correct? Yes. Okay, now I'm looking around, and I think a lot of people are familiar with Caterpillar. They think those big yellow machines, um, but I don't see big yellow machines around me. Where are we, and what do you guys do here? So we're actually in the retail area here where we have merchandise, where customers come in. If they're dropping a the machine off to have repaired or picking up parts, they can get some merchandise, whether it's novelties or things like that. Also, this is the, the portion of the dealership where people will come in to either go to the service department, go to the parts department. So it's, it's the main lobby, if you will. Quinn Caterpillar it's in Bakersfield, we're a, a full service dealership. So we do everything. We can repair the machine, we'll sell the machine, sell parts for it. We have people here that are technical advisors, so if somebody needs help with a a tractor and machine, we could do that as well, full service. Okay. What would you say is the most interesting part of working here at a Queen Caterpillar dealer? I mean, what, what's the craziest thing that you guys do here that most people, if they drive by, they have no idea what goes on. What would you say is the, the most unknown part that if people drive by, they don't know that goes on? Yeah, I think really, especially from the street, if you will, it's is the service department what the folks do, the technicians, the supervisors, managers do in the service department to rebuild the machine, to make it new again, is phenomenal. Um, there's a lot that goes into that, whether it's putting a new engine, 
rebuilding it for the, from the ground up, which sometimes they do. That's really the portion that you can't see from the street is how much time, effort, whether it be parts um, or technicians actually working on the machine goes in to make them actually work again. Okay, so when I think working on a machine, I'm thinking, is this a forklift? Is this, how big are we talking? I mean, what kind of machines can someone expect to see on in our, in our uh, coverage today? I mean, how big are we gonna get? What's the craziest thing we might there, see? There's, there's some big machines here. Some machines um, so big that they have to come here in pieces. Wow. So they'll actually come on a semi, multiple semis in pieces, and then we put them together, make sure it's okay, and then take them apart so it could be shipped to the site, and then they're put back together on site. So even though someone drives by on the 99, they might be next to a semi, you guys are working with machines that take multiple semis just to put it together, just to yes, get it here. Just to get it here. And then you guys put it together, make sure it works, and then strip it all back down and start to work on it. Yes. You know, what, what do you think is our first stop? Where, where should we see next? We'll, we'll, we'll probably go to the service department because okay. to your point, that I think that's where most folks don't see that. Uh, we do have some big machines here so all we can right. see how, how they look, see what the technicians do, see, see machines in, in different stages of being rebuilt and, and see what the guys do out there. Perfect. Well, let's see what we can go find out there and see what kind of heavy machinery we can find. Back to you guys in the studio. We'll see you soon. All right, thanks for that, Mick, and uh, we will go check out some big machinery out there, Quinn, and uh, I'm looking forward to what's going on there. So in studio with us, we have Matthew, a sixth grade student from Stockdale Elementary. April is with us as well, and the two of them are going to check that final answer and see if it does indeed solve that equation. All right, so Matthew, you just said that the value of x is 4, so yeah. what are you going to do to check that? I'm going to replace all of the x's with 4. Okay. So then we'll calculate. Rewrite the problem. I don't have enough room here. So we're going to put a 4 in place of x there. I put parentheses around my 4s to show that that is not 64, but 6 times 4. Very nice, Matthew. And so you are going to do what first? I'm going to solve for the parentheses. So, so use the order of operation? Yes. Go in parentheses so first? 5 minus 4, 1. And then we're rewriting, correct? Yes. OK. <laughs> so can you simplify over here? And will that matter if you simplify 4 and 22? Are you, are you just going to rewrite it, or can you put them together now? Will it make a difference? I think I'll put them together now. So, okay. so 4 plus 22 is 26, I believe. Sounds good. So this right here should equal 26. If not, then I did something wrong. OK, let's check it out. So 2 times 1, 2, Multiplying four. 2 and 1. And multiplying four and six. So two plus twenty-four is twenty-six, and that oh. is equal to twenty-six. So now I know that I mess answer. up. X must be four. Yes. Nicely done. <laughs> so it only takes a little bit of time to check the answer, but that's what a lot of students they just go, all right, yeah, I kind of got the idea of this. I do it, I do it quickly, and I'm done, and they go on. And then they receive a paper back and they go, how did I miss half of these? I don't understand. I thought I knew what I was doing. Just check the answer, right? That way you know. And as you said, if it doesn't work out, you know you did something wrong. So that way you can go back, take a look at the problem and see if maybe you just carried a sign wrong, maybe multiplied something a little differently than <laughs> the way you normally do or something like that. And that small step can make a big difference. That's right. Nicely done. So go ahead and erase the board for us and I've got another, another type of problem for you. <laughs> Wrong end. You know, I would have to say 99% of the kids that come in here and ask to erase the board, they do it like that. <laughs> they like doing that. They like to circle it and then get rid of it instead Same of just time. deleting the whole page at the bottom. But yeah. anyway, it's one of those things. I'm sure you know just that sensation of circle it and be done with it. Same right. time. <laughs> so one of the things you said that you were working on this year and you wanted to do a little more practice was with decimals. Yes. All right. So here we go. So let's go ahead and write this one up on the board. 
So we have uh, 98.145 plus 67.80. Now, if you need to, you can rewrite that however you would like. But as you're doing it, kind of explain to April how you're going through the problem, and then she's right there to help you if you need it. Okay. So I want to line these up. So what, what is these, Matthew? Line what up? 98.145 and 67.80. And how are you going to line them up? What are you going to use to line them up? I'm going to go from top to bottom, and I'm going to go. Here, let me just show you. OK. <laughs> OK, so when you line them up, what did you use in order to put one number below the other number? So. Were you using the 9? Were you using the 8? Were you, what were you using? I was using the decimal point. Oh, OK. <laughs> great, great job. I want to put this down here. So why is it important to use the decimal point? Because if you put it over one digit, that can mess the whole thing up, because you would be adding 98.145 plus 6.78. And All the place just, value is in the wrong, yeah. wrong position. So now you're lining it up with the decimal, which puts the place value in the correct position. Perfect. Go ahead. So since this, I don't have to add 5, I'm just going to write down 5. 4 plus 0, 4. 1 plus 8, 9. 8 plus 7 is 15. I want to carry that over. 6 plus 9 is 15 plus 1 equals 16. So the final answer would be 165.9. Four, five. Very nicely done. April, I'm going to want him to do one more thing with that. Do you have any idea what I would want him to do with that? As far Probably. as his response with the answer. Yeah, that's, I was going to ask there that too. We <laughs> We're on the same path here, sister. Yes. All right, what do we want him to do now? Matthew, can you say that to me um, with decimal? Yes. So language? 165.945 ten thousandths. Ten thousandths? Can you, can you count the decimal places for me? Um, so the first one is, the nine is in what place? It's in the? Tenth. Tenth. And then the four is in? Thousandth. Okay, so say it so to me one more time. 165.945 thousandths. Thank you. So one thing, let's clarify one thing. What does that decimal say? Does it say point or does it have another word? So it's 165. And, and nine, 945 thousandths. Yes. Great job. Nicely done. Because here's what I'd like you to do so that that way you can remember, because you did know it because you said and. Right up there, 23.42. So I could say that's 23 and 42 hundredths. Yes. Put a dollar sign in front of the two. How would we read that now? $23 and 42 cents. So we automatically say and, right? Yes. We don't say $23.42, cents, right? Right. So that's just another way to remember that whenever you see a decimal, you'll always say and, all right? Nicely done. You've done some great work so far this afternoon. For your efforts so far, Matthew, you have got yourself a meal courtesy of our friends at Grillin' Burgers. So congratulations on that. Hopefully you have an opportunity soon to go over to Grillin' Burgers, enjoy a meal of your liking. And if you do go over there, be sure to ask for Lydia. All right? Okay. Lydia loves Do The Math, has loved Do The Math for many years and is a great supporter of Do The Math. And we always want to say thank you to Lydia and all of our sponsors. And uh, she's been with us for a number of years as we celebrate our 20th season on Do The Math. So thank you to Liddy and uh, all of our other sponsors for continuing to support the math program. Right now we're going to head back out, see if we can check out some of that big machinery at Quinn and uh, see what's going on with Mick. All right, we're back here at the Quinn Caterpillar plant in Bakersfield, California, an authorized dealer, but you also said you guys service machines. Now, when I think of a machine, I, I don't think most people realize what a Caterpillar machine is. They might see it, 
but is this more of what you guys talk about servicing? Yes. I mean, you know, yeah, talk so about servicing something. This is massive. This would be this would be a good example, but and probably what most folks are familiar when they think Caterpillar. So a machine or a tractor like this, but but really it could be anything. We have some mini tractors or mini machines, mini excavators. So maybe a landscaping company would use something like that, and it's it's probably about that big. Um, just enough for somebody to sit in. Some of them you can't even sit in, you have to walk behind. Okay. So everything from this and, and bigger that we'll show you to something very small. Um, could be something for a construction, could be a machine or a tractor for ag purposes, All right. or it could be even something for defense like this one over here. So Army, Navy, Marines, they all use this type of equipment. So you guys really specialize in, even though people might see different machines or, or operating equipment, you guys really more specialize in the heavy duty, large industrial? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's like I see here, you know, this isn't something you're going to walk down the street and see every day. Right. Oh, yeah. look, there, there's a, you know, a Caterpillar product. But when people see those heavy machines for, you know, moving the earth, essentially, as people might think, this is what, this is what you guys service, really. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and in this shop here, really, it is that this is the earth moving side, whether it's ag, construction, what have you. It's things that are going to go in the dirt. Wow, and, so, and I know you mentioned earlier, you said military also. I mean, because yes. I think most people think Caterpillar's big yellow machines. <laughs> but I mean, think over here, this one's not yellow. Yeah, that you know, is so what, green. What do we, what, yeah, that why is, is green. it green? What's so different about this one and what's its use? So it's it's used in a, in a military um, application. And because of that, it has to, you know, having uh, something big and yellow out on the, in a, a battlefield maybe, it's gonna stand out. So it's it's done to military specifications. Okay, so really, I mean, you guys do anything heavy machinery wise, I mean, it gets yes. done in this shop and it, this place is massive. I mean, I look around and just, yeah. just, just huge equipment that most people, you know, they never get to see, let alone really understand how large the equipment is. And is your, are your guys' service base always this packed? It, it is, um, we're very busy. We're fortunate to be in Kern County and deal with different indices, whether it's oil and gas, agriculture, construction, um, defense. So yeah, we're we're busy, very busy. So then I, I'm going back to this one here behind us. What is the name of this machine? I'm not sure what other kind of yeah, word to use. So this is an excavator, okay, and it, excavator. It's, it, that's what they use it to do is to ex excavate the dirt. So and now it looks. I mean, it looks like it's mostly put together. I mean, do do most of the the machines that come in do they mostly stay together, or are there some that you strip down entirely? Um, how, how detailed can you guys get in the shop? So we could take it all the way down to the frame and then rebuild it. And wow. then some machines are so large that they can't fit through the door. So some we actually have to dissemble uh -huh. or to get through the door so we can work on them, whether it's take the cab off, um, maybe take tires or something like that off so it could actually get through the door so the folks here can, can work on it. So you might have something that's this assembled, whereas we go across the bay here, and you have something that, I mean, it's in parts and pieces standing on jack stands and just yes. kind of sitting there. You guys go from maybe a minor repair all the way to strip it down, and basically overhaul it. it. And overhaul it, yes. That's yes. amazing. I mean, I can't, hopefully we'll, we'll take another shot here and we'll, we'll find a machine and figure out how much can you guys do to it? You know, what, what are the different stations look like? Because I would imagine it's pretty loud when you're moving and, and operating on this massive machinery it must take lots of power it, it so. does a tremendous amount of power to move to move dirt you wouldn't think that but but it does and that's why some of these machines are so large um, some of it's for productivity so they can move more dirt um, for lack of better words and some of it they, they need the power to actually do that um, we have some deep ripping that goes on in Kern County for water penetration and that's a huge machine we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get to see that soon um, but it takes a lot of power to do that. Well, perfect. Well, hopefully uh, when we come back to, uh, from you guys in the studio, we'll get to find one of those massive machines and it may not operate the way that you think, but until then, send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks for that, Mick. Also, thank you to Craig and everybody over at Quinn. I know that they had a lot of fun when they were over there, learned quite a bit, and we've got some other segments to come up in other weeks. We'll also go check out some more later on this afternoon. Would you like to go check out big machinery like that? Yes. That would be pretty cool. I know that, uh, I don't know about kids these days, but uh, I'm a little older than you, April. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Johnny, I'm sure, can uh, relate to this, but having Tonka trucks when we were growing up, 
Those things were the coolest things in the world. You know, they were, they were big toy trucks to play with and stuff, and we use those all the time. And they... Metal. They were yeah, metal yeah. then, too. And they were trucks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and now, over at Quinn, and they had an opportunity to go see these. I mean, these are life-size donkey trucks, basically, is what it is. And uh, you'll see them all around, and they are in great demand and needed to keep everything going that needs building and stuff like that, moving and stuff like that. So anyway, we'll learn more from Mick and the rest of the folks at Quinn later on today. But Matthew, you ready to do some more work? Yes. All right. Have you ever been, so you have grown up in California. Yes. Have you ever been in snow? Not higher than. Just a little bit around your feet? Yes. Okay, so you've been in snow, so you know what it's like. Yes. Well, somebody that grew up in snow, it's no fun when it's up around your waist and stuff like that, and then you have to dig out of it and things like that. But parts of the country have seen some blizzards recently, all right? So there's a lot of snow where they can drop a couple of feet in a 24-hour period. So that's almost an inch an hour of snow that they're getting over a prolonged period of time. So I found a perfect problem for you to work on. You ready? Yes. Head on over to the board, young man. During a blizzard, it snowed nine and five tenths inches. So we have nine and five tenths. After a week, the sun had melted five and three sevenths of the snow. How many inches of snow are left? So how do you think you're going to solve that? I think we're going to have to subtract the two fractions. All right. You and April, go to it. So how are we going to subtract the fractions? Well, first, we want to um, create three sevenths and five tenths. We want their denominators to be equal. So we need a common denominator? Yes. OK, and so how, how are you going to figure out what the common denominator is between 10 and 7? You would just find the least common multiple. OK. So. And so how do you usually do it? Do you do it in your head, or is there a written strategy that you use? I usually write out the factors. And okay. Or the multiples. Or yeah, the multiples. So for 10, let's see, 1, 10, 2. Actually, we can just do the multiples. So we can do 10, because you said we're looking for a common denominator, which would be the least common multiple. Yes. So we're going to do 10, and then 20, because all we need are the multiples. So we'll start with 10, and then go 20. And then after that, yeah, there you go, 30. 40, because we need the one that's common. I'll go to 70. OK. <laughs> yeah, let me help you. Let me tap on the board. Okay. There we go. Thank you. And now we're going to find a list of multiples for 7, correct? Correct. So okay. 7, 14. 21. And you're just going 7 times 1, 7 times 2, 7 times 3, right? Yes. OK. 28. And we're at 7 times 5. So what do you think it is right now? <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be 70. 70. Why do you think that? Mainly because I multiply 7 and 10, and that gets 70, so. I say just for time's sake, you okay. can go ahead and cut the chase. Is there, okay. <laughs> is there a multiple, though, of 7 that has a 0 in it aside from 70 that before you got to, to 7, 70? Like, do you think like 7 times 6, 7 times 7, 7 times 8? None of those have a 0 at the end, right? Right. Because there's a pattern of zeros with the 10, right? Right. So we can go with 70 that way, too? Yes. Okay, so let's go with our common denominator of 70. I think that happens just because your hand is touching the board a little bit as you're writing. Uh, so let me tap it again here. There you go. So, so now how do I find the new numerator? What I do is that I cross multiply with, so with the denominator to the numerator. So 
10 times 3, 30. And 7 times 5, 35. So. So now we're going to, now that our denominator is common, we can just subtract. Yes. Okay. So 9 minus 5 is 4. And 35 minus 30 equals 5. And I can, I will put a 70 over that and... And are we done or is there more we need to do? I'm not sure how 5 and 70 can be reduced, but... Does 5 go into 70? Do you want to check it over here? Can you divide? Actually, it does, so... So when we simplify, we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by 5, and it'll simplify to what? So 5 divided by 5 is? 1. So that'll be our new numerator. And 1 70 14th. divided by 5 is? 14. And then our whole number? So the, same. The, final no the final answer will be 4 and 1 14th. 4 and 1 14th what? Four. Inches of? Inches of snow. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. Always important to remember the units right there. So inches of snow. So it melted four inches, a little bit more than that. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. We are celebrating our 20th season on Do the Math this year. And one of the, uh, well, one of the many people that have been part of our program over those last years has been the folks at ROC and CTEC with the Kern High School District. In past years, we would go out and we would take a look at some of the programs that they feature at ROC and we would learn a little bit about them and then we would have the students come in and some of the instructors and show you those programs. This year, entirely new, everything that you've been viewing this year from ROC and CTEC, student produced. And today, we're going to take a look at the health industry. Um, I love teaching, so I love teaching healthcare, and so this was an opportunity to instill knowledge into high school students, so I was very excited. So any students that would like to go into healthcare, so if you'd like to go into healthcare, this is a great foundation um, for any students that are interested in any type of healthcare. I really want to get into the medical field, and I really want to, you know, just have that as my career, and so this is a great step to take before actual college? Um, what inspired me to take it is, well, to get into the other classes, it'll be harder if you just go in without taking this class. So if you take this class, then you get first priority. So it'll like be easier for me to either get into the dental or the um, sports medicine. I'm currently working on passing this class to be able to go into the MA class. So. For right now, it's just basically getting good grades in this class and focusing and just working to get to that class. I'm currently working on to get into, I think I'm going towards the sports medicine because I think it just fascinates me to help other people, like if they're injur injured, just like wrap them up or anything. The students, it, this program benefits the students because it gives them a basic foundation and so they can decide what they want to do after this program. They can go into nursing, they can go into CNA, they can go into pharmacy. So it gives them an opportunity, it gives them a broad opportunity um, of different choices that they can go into. And so it's a, it's a foundation, but it's a great tool to figure out what it is you like in healthcare. I think uh, for the whole career thing, it'd be the emergency department, because I feel like fast paced, you know, you never know what's going to come through the door. Like crazy stuff can happen and you just have to be prepared for it and I think that's what excites me a lot. Like just to help people, like to support them like in what they need, that's like one of the biggest things. Heidi gives the students a pathway into the other medical programs such as pharmacy tech, CNA, medical assisting, 
uh, sports medicine, dental, so it gives them a lot of medical terminology, um, the different careers in the medical field, and puts them on the pathway to those. So the kids get certified in first aid and CPR. They also have dual enrollment where they get credit at Bakersfield College for medical assisting and nursing pathways. What made me interested in this program is I knew when this program was offered to me is that I for sure wanted to go into the medical field. At first it was thinking pediatrician and definitely being in this program made me change my mind a little bit of what I wanted to do but still in the medical field. So we get to class and then we start off our mornings with journals and then we do our job readies and then we usually tra uh, transition into packets and our flashcards and our annotations and then we go on to break and then when we come back from break we have lecture until the end of class. We do calculations so we'll calculate um, medications, how to convert milliliters, liters, um, pints, quarts, um, so math is utilized in that aspect. I enjoy the energy. The energy of the classes really is what's keeping me in it. I really and I love everything about like the people in there. I love my teacher. I love the content that we're absorbing. It's just a really, it's a really fun class to be in. What I enjoy about this class is how all of my classmates are very forward and ask many questions to my teacher. So that definitely clears up a lot of misunderstandings or something I may not understand. And definitely Mrs. Schneider is one of the teachers where she explains it very thoroughly and how we need to understand it. Um, I think all of the classes are different in their own, um, giving students insight to certain career paths um, areas. They use a lot of calculations, they use a lot of terminology, um, so I think every program is unique and different. And once again, a big thanks to all the staff and students at ROC and CTEC, 100% produced by the students and wonderfully done they are. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 530. In studio with us is Matthew, a sixth grade student from Stockdale Elementary. And one of the things that you have that is a big part of sixth grade is Camp Keep. Yes. What have you heard about Camp Keep? I know you haven't gone and you probably aren't going to be able to go this year. But what have you heard about Camp Keep? I've heard from past students that went there that it was pretty fun, that you get to do a lot of activities there, and that's pretty much it. I haven't heard okay. too much. Well, that's pretty good stuff to hear, right? That's a yeah. lot of fun, and you've got a lot of fun activities. And I know that a lot of the schools this year are doing virtual tours of Camp Keep, so I think your school is coming up pretty soon and you will be able to do some of the activities that you're doing. And the good thing about it is that you and your family or you and your friends or something sometime would be able to go over to the coast and actually see what they're talking about and be able to experience those things even though it wouldn't be in the same setting as being at Camp Key. But that is something coming up that I know you're gonna just enjoy when you guys start doing that in class. Anyway, you ready for a little more work, young man? Yes. All right, back over to the board. Here we go. So now we're going to work with uh, some more fractions. The others were mixed numbers. So oh. 7 ninths, 7 over 9, times 15 fourths, 15 over 4. So have at it. So I'm going to multiply the denominators first because that's just easier. Okay, 7 9 so times 30. 4. And 7 times 15, I'm going to have to do off to the side. Okay. Can't do it out of my head. That's okay. <laughs> that went wrong. So seven times five is? 35. Okay. I'm gonna carry that over. One times seven, seven plus three is 10. So I'll be 105 over 36, but I'm not done. I'll you are not done. How do you know? I know because that's an improper fraction. Okay. So I want to I want to find how many times 36 goes into 105. So you're going to turn your improper fraction into a mixed number? Yes. Okay, go ahead. 
So. So you're going to divide. How many times 36 goes into 105? Okay, go ahead. So what are you thinking now? Like, how do you figure out how many times 36 goes into 105? What numbers are you using to get your guess? I'm going to think about three, four, between three and four. Three and four? Okay. So. And so where do you get that number from? You're just guessing between three and four? I'm just. <laughs> I'm just seeing what your strategy is. I just figure is. since um, four to. 425 makes 100, and 36 okay. is close to 25, so I could kind of relate it to that. So I'm going to guess it's 3, since 36 is obviously a lot higher than 3. It's 25, so. Okay. That's a great strategy. Let's see if it works. So 36 times 3. <laughs> that was pretty slick how that happened, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, why need to do it over there? <laughs> Got 108, so. Ah. ah. <laughs> Is it? So that cannot go into 105, so I would have to do two. You can just rewrite it on the bottom or not. Hey, when you get to junior high, we want to see all your work, so try not to erase it. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> That'll be 72. 72. 105 minus 72. I'm going to have to And we're going to put the 2 above the 5 because 36 doesn't go into 10. It goes into right. 105. I just write a small one up there, so. Ooh, hang on. So we're going to subtract 10 from 7. So I believe it would be 33. So does 36 go into 33? No. So okay, so now we can write our mixed number, right? Right, so 2 and 33 over 3. 36. And I'm going to stop you guys right there. I want you to leave everything on the board just as it is because we're not quite through with that problem yet. But we do have one more opportunity to head back out to Quinn Caterpillar and check out with Mickey and see what's going on with the big machinery. All right. Thanks to you guys in the studio. We're back out here at Quinn Caterpillar with Craig Henderson, parts manager out here at Quinn Caterpillar. And we just got out of the service bay talking about where these different machines go to get serviced, whether it's something simple or something where it gets totally stripped down. And Craig, what massive machine? This is larger than anything that we saw in the shop. What are we looking at here? Yes, this is a, a big machine. This is a D11, and this is unique to our area. It's unique because typically this tractor, this machine would come as a bulldozer. So it would have a big blade right here to push dirt. And as you can see, this does not have a blade. This is used for deep ripping because we're in California and water is so precious. They'll use this big giant machine with a ripper on the back of it to rip the earth to break it apart for water penetration. So when you say a ripper, I mean, so it's obviously on here, you say it's on the back? It's of on the, the back, yeah, and, and we can't ship it with the ripper on, but you can see how far in the dirt. So imagine it's six, eight feet long, um, probably about this wide. And this is going to go, this is how far it goes in the dirt. So imagine six, eight feet down, that ripper is cultivating the earth for water penetration. Now, does it get warm at all when it's down there? I feel like there's a lot of friction. I mean, it, it does. Does, does it look, does it, I mean, does it look fine when it comes out? Or, no, or it does not. Signs? What it does it look not. like? When, when they're using this machine and it's ripping that earth, they'll pull this up hydraulically and that shank will be glowing from the friction of the earth and the amount of power that this generates, that shank will glow red. It's that hot. Wow. So I'm, I'm sure that is all, is that also something you guys service where yes. you know, after a while that shank just gets, whether it's dull or just needs to be remodified, is that something you guys do here also? We do. So sometimes they'll hard face it when we go in, in the weld shop 
and uh, the fabrication shop, you'll see where they can hard face things, add material to that to make it harder and last longer. We can do that here. Um, sometimes it just wears out, it needs to be replaced. We can do that as well. Okay. How is this get power? I mean, what power is this, all of this machinery? Is this gas, propane, diesel, is it electric? What, what are we dealing with here? How, do, how does something this large and that powerful move around? So, so this is a diesel machine. In fact, um, this, this machine was repowered. We had to modify the tractor to put the engine in. They had to fabricate the hood, um, all of the cooling area, all that's been fabricated by the fabrication shop because this engine did not come with this tractor. So now it, it's, it's already massive. It already was powerful. Now it's even more powerful. And it's even cleaner, and more, efficient. more efficient. Yes. That's phenomenal. Now, when we talk about powering this machine, I see more hydraulics everywhere. How does it transfer power? Does it have a drive shaft like a, like a semi truck? I mean, they have lots of power too. Yeah. What actually gets turned and where, where does that pressure come from? I see, I see a lot of nuts and bolts here. I'm sure there's gotta be some sort of pressure behind this plate if you have this much securing it. I mean, is this where the pressure goes and, and turns it? What, what are we looking at here? It is, so really what we're looking at is a big bicycle chain. And just like on a bicycle, you have a sprocket. So you turn the pedals, the sprocket turns the chain, and then the bicycle goes. Same premise, just really big and really <laughs> powerful. Um, in fact, when we go to the, the uh, fabrication shop, you'll see where we can repair this track. Because it is like a bicycle chain, these pins can be replaced, they can be turned, the track shoe can be replaced. All this is just one big chain and can be serviced. Same thing with the dry portion of the machine. It is hydraulically driven and things wear out. You can replace the sprocket, you can see the bolts here, you can replace the drive assembly, um, repair it, all that's done here on site. And it sounds like this is all math related. I mean, to figure out how much power can we put in this, how much is needed to turn the track. I mean, it sounds like math is every day here, whether it's putting it together, taking it apart, putting it back together to specifications. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of pressure and power and if you don't put it back exactly right, could be catastrophic. It could, even to the point where if this bolt isn't torqued specifically to the right specifications, this is gonna come apart. And to your point, that's not gonna be good. Wow, so Craig, thanks so much for having us out here at Queen Caterpillar. Next time we come out, we're definitely gonna have to check out the behind the scenes. You know, you go to the service, you strip it down. But like you said, when we modify something that's not original, what does that look like? You know, how, how from the bottom do these guys have to start? And next time around here, we're definitely gonna have to take a look at that in your service shop um, and see how, how do they fabricate all these different machines. So Craig, thanks so much for having us Thank out you. here. Thank you, We appreciate it. Thank back you. to you guys in the studio. We will be back here at Queen Caterpillar very soon in the future. Check out how do they fabricate all these machines, especially when they're modified to do a much heavier duty assignments than they were first designed. Until then, back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks for that, Mick. And also a big thanks to everyone at Queen Caterpillar for having Do The Math out there and learning a little bit more about what they do and how math and science is applied to it. Matthew, what did you have to do for the final step there? I had to simplify 2 and 33 over 36. So I realized that um, 33 and 36 have a common multiple, and that is 3. So you just divided each by 3, you got 11 twelfths. Good. Did you have fun today, Matthew? Yes. That's what we wanted to hear. Hey, until we meet again, continue to do the math. support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.